Finally got some new plywood. The last step in building this massive, massive cabinet is the top cabinet. It's basically three cabinets all going to be conjoined into one, as I've said in the past. I've got my cut list. Did some math and measurement, some eyeballing. I've got my base. I got my two sides, the top and the back. All I got to do is cut five pieces and then screw them together and I'll be done. Easier said than done. Mainly because the space of the workshop and moving these, these heavy pieces of plywood around, that's probably the, the biggest pain in the butt is moving these sheets around because they are not light. They're not light at all. So with that, I'm going to get out the track saw. You know, a lot, a lot of people love the track saw, but most people don't know it even exists. Or I put some annotations in one of my last videos that I get thousands of questions about what the heck is that thing. And someone said, If they don't know what a track saw is, they shouldn't be watching your videos. No, they're probably a normal person. A normal person that has even been around construction. They don't know what the heck a track saw is. They don't know what Festool is. All right. R Handyman rant is over. Now to cut the pieces. Ah, nope. One more thing. The dimensions of the plywood. I use three quarters on the sides because of the shelf pins. You can build a box at a half inch pretty easily. But when you go to drill for your shelf pins, they're, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty thin. And you don't want to poke through. Even though this is going to get skinned on both sides, I like using the three quarter inch plywood. So you got, I got the other ones right over here. I like using the three quarter inch plywood to give enough room for those sh to drill into those shelf pins. I don't know what I just said. I'm speaking in different languages here. Where is my shelf pin jig? Here. This is my shelf pin drilling jig. These are shelf pins. Uh, one of many different styles of shelf pins. And that's not a half an inch. It's, my guess is, three-eighths of an inch. Um, but you don't want to get that close. Put this stuff away and get back to cutting some plywood with the social media track saw. That's what I'm going to call it. It's the social media tool. Now, people have been using track saw-like systems forever. It usually consisted of a board clamped to your door, a piece of plywood, whatever, a cut guide, a clamped on cut guide. With these track saws, I don't know if it's different from brand to brand, but they have these rubber things here that are supposed to make it stick to plywood. Now, on unfinished plywood, it probably would stick, but on pre-finished plywood, which all cabinets are made of, or at least they should be, um, it slides around like it's, it's very slippery. So you can't use it and get accurate cuts without this. Trust me, I've used it and, and watched the thing just go move all over the place. I definitely would go with the battery operated one. Dealing with cords is just... Man, I got rid of all my cords in 09. I, I, I sold them all off and went pretty much full corded tools. Uh, so back to the track saw. The only like real use for this is to break down sheets of plywood. And what I mean by break down, cut them down into pieces that are manageable enough to use the table saw. Hopefully I did my measurements right. 30 and 3 quarters. Time to switch out three quarter for half. Like I said, only my sides are going to be three quarter. This sheet of plywood is $129. Uh, I'd like to save it for structural components, uh, which is going to be the base cabinets. Those base cabinets, three quarter inch sides, it's where that heavy, heavy countertop is going to be sitting. So we got a dent. Could have been me moving this thing around, or could have been that way from 
the the hardwoods specialty store so i'm going to do is cut this an inch longer than i need and then i will run it through the table saw to trim that that half inch off okay. That's enough of the chain track saw. Switch over to a real tool, the table saw. All the pizzas are done. I'm going to assemble this box a little bit different. Don't know why, just feel like doing something a little different. No pocket holes. So, this here is the bottom. This is the top. Now this is the back and these are the two sides. I'm gonna use some nails. I'm gonna use some nails uh, just to hold it together basically pre-assemble it and then it all gets screwed together. This is a B1 plywood. Time for me to reveal my mistakes. The ones I've been talking about all along. And I've made it on every single one, even this one. <laughs> Just slipped my mind. Is I now have no way to attach the face frame to all three of these boxes. What I was supposed to do is drill pocket holes. Three quarter, set up for three quarter inches along the perimeter and cross pieces. And now I have to go back and do that. I can use this gadget here. This one here is, you just, cl you just clamp it on. You line it up with the bottom and uh, 
clamp it on. Get this sucker out. Make sure I'm doing this. Is and there you have a pocket hole. I mean, you take a three quarter inch or an inch and a quarter screw set up for three quarters. It comes through right dead center and into your three quarter inch board. That is one massive, massive cabinet. Massive. <laughs> it's going to take up a lot of room in that kitchen. Not going to be so big after you put something like this in there. And this is where the oven goes. Right about here is where the microwave is and it folds down towards you. So it's perfect height to see in there. This here folds down. You can put your, your turkey in there. This here, I still have to do the shelf pin holes. Drill up the shelf pin holes for shelving that goes in here. Obviously, I got to build the doors. I got to build a massive drawer that goes down there. But before I do the drawer and the doors, I got to install it. But before I do that, I've got to prep this frame and paint it. Then get this all delivered into the house. It won't be too bad because it's in three pieces. But can you imagine? That's floor to ceiling. This here will go right up to the ceiling. I really have no idea where I am in editing these videos. All I know is I, I come out and I work on it and I talk to the camera and sometime later in the future I will be editing these all together and this may be the end of this episode and if it is the end of this episode thank you for watching check out my my store thehandyman.store thehandyman.store put it on the screen put it in the, the description uh, go check out what I've been working on behind the scenes. It's, it's a tricky thing to learn, graphic design. Thank you again for watching. Go check out the store. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.